And so it is now my pleasure to call to the podium our practitioner, Jennifer Livingston, who is this, this morning's speaker. Jennifer lives, moves, breathes, powers. She is a powerhouse of energy. She loves this teaching and she allows it to permeate everything that she does. So I'm sure this morning she's coming to us with words that will again incite us, encourage us to be more than we can be or we seem to be. Jennifer, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning, friends, Good and morning. thank you, Carol, for setting the tone for this morning's service. Let me also add my own words of welcome to all of you here in the sanctuary and to those tuned into this service on Facebook Live, and those who will join us later on YouTube. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And as you have heard Carol say, it's a nice and cozy Sunday morning. We have the sounds of rain in the background and the backdrop is just nice and warm and we just want to be cuddled up together. Oh, yeah. But so we're so grateful for those who have come out in this weather to be here with me this morning. And of course, for those of you who are joining me online. I want to begin this morning's message with a little experiment, so I hope you're up to it. So if you're wearing a watch or a ring, I would like for you to just remove it from the hand you're currently wearing it on and place it on your other hand. <laughs> or place the ring on our other finger and let's just leave it there for a while. And now those of you online, whatever you have on that you want to switch around, please do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That was a loaded statement. But for most of us, myself included, we have a set routine that we follow every day. And it would probably go something like this. You wake up, spend some quiet time communing with God, and then you get started on getting dressed, eating breakfast, um, heading out the door, join the line of the traffic to get to work or your place of business. And for the most part, we drive the same route daily as if by autopilot. And we get to work to begin another day. We become so attached to the known that we hardly ever venture outside of this path. It is as if we're inside of a box. And because we know where the boundaries are, we feel safe. It is this attachment to the known that keeps us from creating the life we truly desire, as it is frightening at times to step into the unknown, yet that is where all new creation must take place. So if you're ready to do so, then join me as we explore stepping out into the unknown and loving it. That's the title of the talk this morning. I must admit the basis for this talk was triggered by the series of classes that were being held on Thursday evening entitled The Art of Uncertainty, based on the book by the same name by Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones. It is a book I had read before, but going over it once more opened up fresh insights. The final class was held last Thursday, and you can imagine my surprise and absolute delight when the author himself joined us for the final class. Oh, yes, kudos to our two facilitators, our teachers, extraordinary Reverend Sonia Davidson and Reverend Dan Shant. Wow. We had the opportunity to ask questions of him. And of course, pearls of wisdom were shared with us. If you missed this series, then look out for when the temple will be hosting it again or classes on any of the other books by Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones. In the meantime, please join any of the classes currently being held. It will be well worth it. And I heard Carol share two classes with you, and that is my shameless plug for us all to 
get back to school. Yes. Right, now for those of you who really are having a difficulty keeping the watch or the ring on the opposite hand on which you have placed it, then you can switch it back. But <laughs> and I see that happening in front of me. But for those of you who want to really challenge yourself this morning um, to go with the chain, then let's leave it there until the end of the message. How is that? Mm. Let's look, at, let's look at what it will take to begin this journey of stepping into the unknown. But before we begin any journey, we have to clarify exactly where we are and where we want to be. So some of the first questions we should ask ourselves is, am I living with a sense of adventure or a sense of fear? Do I feel that each day is pretty much the same as the day before? Um, is there a sense of resignation? Like, oh well, these are the cards that life has dealt me. Or do you live in anticipation of the possibility of learning, seeing, being, or doing something new? And do you truly realize that you are living in a state of grace, able to co-create your experiences by your very birthright, your connection to the divine, well, once we have answered these initial questions, then we can begin to look at how it is we will step out into the unknown and love it. Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones, who is a prolific author and a new thought luminary, in this book, The Art of Uncertainty, How to Live in the Mystery of Life and Love It, poses the question, and I quote, what if we could learn how to be at peace with I don't know and embrace the possibility that the future is full of mystery, excitement, and unlimited opportunity? Would we be willing to explore this?" End quote. Dr. Jones goes on to state that, in order for us to move forward on this pathway and create new experiences, we cannot keep creating from within the field of what we already know. That is, if we use only the past as our reference point, then we will find that we are only creating new versions of the same old thing." End quote. <laughs> While none of us knows for sure what our future holds, we know that our consciousness is the filter through which the limitless potential of the, of the universe flows. And therefore, what we create in the future is a direct result of what is set in our consciousness as possible today. This we know as the law of cause and effect, which Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder of this teaching, states in our Science of Mind textbook, and I quote, it has been proven that by thinking correctly and by a conscious mental use of the law of mind, we can cause it to do definite things for us, through us, end quote. The very act of thinking about what we are thinking about is the first step. Get in touch with the thinking that inspires every part of your life, your primary thought atmosphere. As Dr. Holmes also states, what we demonstrate today, tomorrow, and the next is not as important as the tendency which our thought is taking, the dominant attitude of our mind." End quote. Friends, the laws of nature have neither sentiment, feeling, or emotion. So to the law of mind. Like the laws of nature is always impersonal, it will respond to everyone. In seeing this law in action, I'm reminded of a mother who took her little boy to church. And while in church, the little boy said, Mommy, I have to pee. The mother said to the little boy, it is not appropriate to say the word pee in church. So from now on, whenever you have to pee, just tell me you have to whisper. <laughs> the following Sunday, the little boy went to church with his dad, and during the service said to his father, Daddy, I have to whisper. The father looked at him and said, okay, just whisper in my ear. <laughs> the law of cause and effect rightly demonstrated. 
friends, Arthur Joel Goldsmith, in his book, The Heart of Mysticism, implores us to, and I quote, acknowledge Christ in the midst of you, and then acknowledge Christ in the midst of all individual being, human, animal, vegetable, or mineral. He reminds us that the Christ present is within, in the weather, in the storm, is present in the weather, the stones of the ground, at the bottom of the sea, and in the very air we breathe. Therefore, we are never outside of the realm of its care, direction, protection, and love. Is it necessary then for us to know the whys and hows of everything for us to move forward in times of uncertainty? Indeed, no. If we take the decision to never leave our comfort zone, to settle for our current condition, then a vital part of us, our soul, begins to wither and die because we're not responding to this divine urge. And I'd like to share with you the thoughts of a freelance journalist, her name is Justina Bakute, in an article which she wrote back in November of 2015. And it says, here's the truth about stepping out of your comfort zone that no one talks about. The magic happens outside of your comfort zone, or does it? And the article reads, it was a chilly March evening when I landed at JFK. Was it chilly though? Honestly, I don't remember. After spending nine hours in a plane crammed with Russians, tourists, and Brighton Beach locals, 30 excruciating minutes on the border and then messing about the airport for an hour with no Wi-Fi signal trying to find the people who were supposed to pick me up, my mind was too busy to register small things like the weather. Welcome to the United States, enjoy your stay. The jolly line pronounced with a heavy Russian accent by one of the flight attendants was echoing in my brain. She may as well have welcomed me to Mars, I couldn't have cared less because to me it wasn't the destination that mattered, it was the fact that after this, my life would never be the same. Now don't let this intimate description of my first few hours in the promised land throw you off. The details are not important here. My goal is to talk about a universal experience you and others have faced many times in the span of your lives. The experience that can delicately Fit, that can be delicately fitted into the following line. Magic happens outside of your comfort zone. I have to admit that stepping out of my comfortable bubble and into the unknown didn't make me less cynical than before. But there's always a but. Naturally, experiencing such a revelation made me feel the need to share it with someone. So let me convince you to take chances more often. And she goes on to say, because ultimately choosing to do something new, go somewhere new, to be someone new means to single yourself out from everything and everyone you were familiar with before. It says, she says, being outside of your comfort zone will sometimes make you feel incredibly vulnerable because you're no longer in the know. And because you're afraid to make mistakes even though you're doing something for the very first time, and because there are people who are much better than you at this, it makes you feel much like a dum-dum. <laughs> she says, stepping in the unknown, though, will most likely make you regret it at some point, sometimes, and it will make you ponder about all the things you left behind. But it's all good. You know why? Because of all these experiences, you will get closer to understanding the real meaning of the promised magic that happens outside of your comfort zone. And then you will realize and discover about yourself along the way the fact of how many great ideas your mind can fathom in solitude, how it finds the most brilliant answers to nearly impossible problems when it's left alone to sink or swim, and the fact of how strong and enduring you actually are, how pain, fear, and doubt are just a tiny pebble on your road to happiness and the fact of how open your heart can be to new experiences, new people and new ways of thinking and doing. Yes, friends, magic happens outside of your comfort zone. And that's the end of that article. 
And I'd like to continue by saying Dr. Holmes also states in the Science of Mind textbook that nature will not let us stay in any one place too long. She will let us stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary to the unfolding and advancement of the soul. We can all take lessons then from a nestling bird when it's about to fly for the first time. It knows instinctively that it knows how to fly. And since infinite intelligence working as instinct directs the bird, this is why the eagle will literally kick its young out of the nest for it to fly. At times, we ourselves may need that nudge for us to move out, since we know that the same intelligence operating in, through, and as us knows how to support and sustain us. Yet, while we know this to be true at a conscious level, we often choose to remain in a situation such as a relationship that is not working, or a job for which the joy and the passion has long ceased to exist. Friends, what keeps us from moving on? Is it the fear that we feel, which is often associated with a loss of some kind? For example, if we fear the loss of a title, perhaps a job title or a reputation, then this, this undesired change can push us into a world of uncertainty. Joel Goldsmith also in his book, The Heart of Mysticism, states, and I quote, when there's no longer fear in world consciousness, there will be no wars, greed, lust, or anger, and false ambitions disappear with the disappearance of fear, end quote. Friends, everything that we could want is on the other side of fear. We must have courage to move towards what we fear. And courage is not just the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear, and that is our faith. For most of us, our tendency then is to resist change and to remain with what is familiar because we are comfortable with it. But it is only the infinite intelligence, that energy we call life, that never changes. It is only the form in which it momentarily manifests itself that changes. Therefore, the next thing to do to step into the unknown is to choose to do so. As Dr. Holmes tells us in the Living the Science of Mind, we, al we already have all the faith we will ever need. My friends, as practitioners of truth and awakened individuals, we can exercise our choice whether, as Dr. Jones in The Art of Uncertainty calls it, and I quote, mindlessly react to our affairs or mindfully respond to our affairs, end quote. So when we mindlessly react, we oftentimes act irrationally, allowing our minds to run away with our affairs, while if we had stopped to face them and mindfully think about how we could respond, we would be more, uh, we will see that and shed the light of truth on them we'll see that it loses the power to scare us. Studies have shown that persons who respond rather than react are more effective communicators, better problem solvers, and overall happier people. So maybe we want to consider being responsive and not reactive. And so we're also further reminded that it is important to realize that beneath all emotions, including fears, Fear lies the authentic self, our God self, awaiting our recognition of its presence. It is for us to find ways to deepen our relationship with our authentic self. Our own founding minister, Dr. Elma Lumsden, in one of her classes reinforces, reinforced this point of being in touch with our authentic self. And she gave us this definition of fear, and she said, and I quote, fear is a signal that the thoughts you're thinking is of a lower vibration than who you are. My friends, we are called by the master teacher Jesus, as he taught us in Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 3, the King James Version, it says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. 
When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And amen indeed. Despite our knowing this intuitively though, when we are faced with the uncertainty and the I don't know what to do and how to do it, and all of us can relate to that, um, of the situations in our lives, embracing change does require deep faith. And what is the deep faith that we know how to do it and that we know we have? It says it's an inner knowing that we are connected to spirit which is the all power, all presence, and all wisdom that knows what to do and when to do it and how to do it in our lives and our affairs. And when we embody this depth of faith, it brings a sense of comfort and inner peace to our world. And it helps us to surrender and trust the process of change. Of course, learning to trust the process is a process. <laughs> Since the unfolding of life in and of itself is a process. So, if you're not mindful, it is very easy to allow the drama in the moment to distort our view of our lives. And I can relate. Friends, ask yourself, am I willing to step into the unknown, to have a daring adventure to trust that with God all things are possible? If your answer is yes, do you feel that way? By the way, let me throw it out to you. Vance has raised his hand. He says yes. So let me ask the question again. You're right, Sandy. It says, are you willing to step into the unknown to have a daring adventure to trust that with God all things are possible? Yes. Right now. Good. And I can say the same for myself because I've stepped into an unknown for the last two weeks and I'm going through. So let me tell you what it is that has been helping me to go through this new experience. And these are a few ideas which I had come across from Reverend Kathy Kuna of Centers for Spiritual Living from DuPage, Illinois. And that I will believe will be useful for all of us to adopt if we want to keep on stepping out into the unknown and loving it. And the first thing is, trust divine mind. Mm -hmm. The presence of the divine is within you, expressing as you, and this presence loves you unconditionally and forever. It created you in order that it might enjoy life by means of you. It is up to you to give spirit a good time. Mm -hmm. Two, decide, decide on a new way. Decide within yourself on a new thought you want to think, on a new idea you want to see come through in your life. Choose an idea. Third, risk no. The only way to move from mediocrity to greatness is to take a risk. Risk by daring to dream big. Risk your self-imposed limitations by thinking grand thoughts. Risk changing not only what you think others think about you, but what you think about yourself. Risk thinking, doing, and being a new, improved you. Number four, change your thinking. You change your thinking one thought at a time. Take a look at where you stop, where you step back, or where you have been unwilling to go. This is simply facing what you have believed to be true for you, what has been safe, or what gives you a sense of security. Visualize yourself succeeding beyond your previous limited ideas. This is replacing the old with the new. And then fifth, she says, face and replace. What you think about, you bring about. Where your mental energy goes is what comes into your life. Who wants less good, less health, less love, fewer opportunities to succeed? No one. So deep within every human, you has the desire to succeed in being, having, and doing the best they are capable of, even more than we can yet imagine. And finally, she says, 
practice, practice, practice. That is a familiar mantra for us here at the temple. This does take practice, and I am really practicing, boy. It is simple, but not always easy. Being self-aware is much more challenging than just staying in the old rut of living a safe, boring life. And if you made it this far with the watch or ring switched, you can change it back now. <laughs> you like it where it is? All right, well, enjoy it. <laughs> because in concluding, my friends, as we conclude the journey this morning, you deserve to think highly of yourself in ways that uplift and support you in your life. You are up to the challenge. Step out into the unknown and love it. And I'll leave you with a quote from the Buddha which says, all that we are is the result of what we have thought. The mind is everything, what we think we become. Namaste. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for another juke to step out into the un unknown. As I sat there listening to you, I remembered um, a talk you gave. You gave on a Sunday, sorry, on a Tuesday evening many years ago, in which you related an experience in Negril, uh, where you, I, 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 I'm not sure what it was, but it, I guess it was swinging from one thing to the other. And, Oh, whatever it was, the inspiration was to move out, to let go of some things in order to experience the thrill and the joy of the, the moment. So stepping out. I don't know. Stepping out into the unknown is surrendering, surrendering to that power and presence that being that supports us stepping out in the unknown to take advantage of the magic and the miracle that is there awaiting us. So thanks again. May you again. <laughs>